Flynn Dog Science with me, Caleb Flynn. Subscribe, like, comment, and hit that bell. What's up, my science lovers? Good to see you today. Have you ever filled up a cup of water or milk like above the top of the cup? It used to be my favorite way to drink milk and water. Uh, today we're going to do a similar thing with a penny. We're going to take a little dropper and drop little drops of water, alcohol, and soap on the penny. Which do you think will make the biggest bulb of fluid on top of that penny? Do you think the water will, the alcohol will, or the soap will? Let's try it. And then at the very end, stick around and we'll try to figure out, especially why water works the way that it does, but then we'll also make some little notes about why alcohol and soap behave the way they do in a handwritten tutorial. Let's give it a go. Did you pick any of those winners? Um, did you think water was gonna win or alcohol or soap? What was your go-to? And you know why? Here's my idea. So I, you know, I'm not uh, by any means an expert, but here's my initial thoughts. And you critique them. Let me know in the comments what we should add, what we should um, subtract maybe. I don't know, you let me know. 
But so if we draw our penny here, okay, and we draw a little water in the center of it, and water is oxygen, and it has two hydrogens that are going to be stuck to that oxygen. And the oxygen part has two what we call lone pairs. So it's electrons just floating on one side. And the hydrogens have what's called a covalent bond, a shared electron bond between the oxygen and the hydrogen. And the oxygen side of a water is partially negative because it's more electronegative. And the hydrogen is partially positive because it's less electronegative. And we'll get into that a little bit right here. So if you think about water, okay, water behaves sort of like a magnet. And if we thought of the north side of the magnet being partially positive and the south side of the magnet being partially negative, that'll help us figure out what's going on with neighboring water molecules. We know magnets, they want to stick together. They want to like pull together uh, because north and south attract. And we're comfortable with that. We're maybe not as comfortable with um, partial positives and partial negatives, but they're going to behave the same way. A partial positive is going to be attracted to a partial negative. So if two magnets are two neighboring water molecules, we'll think about how that is going to um, affect their interactions in that water. So uh, let's draw some perimeter waters now, and I'll try to orient these waters generally like how they might be in space. And I'm going to really oversimplify. I'm only going to draw five waters total. Um, so we'll have four perimeter waters and one central water here. And again, our hydrogen side is partially positive, and partially positives are going to orient themselves towards partially negatives so that they sort of stick together, and that has a special type of bond called a hydrogen bond. So what is a hydrogen bond? Um, and again, in your head, you can kind of be thinking, okay, it's very simplest. It's this positive end of water sticking to the negative end of a neighbor water. Okay, so the attraction between this partially negative side of a molecule and what's our molecule? We have oxygen. Okay, it's the partially negative side. It's more electronegative. So attraction between a partially negative side of a molecule that is more electronegative. So oxygen has an electronegativity of 3.4 and the partially positive side of a neighbor molecule. So our neighbor molecule here, we're talking about all waters, um, our neighbor water molecule that has hydrogen because it's forming a hydrogen bond. And the hydrogen side will be partially positive and um, the neighbor that it's attracted to, like oxygen, is going to be more electronegative. So the hydrogen is less electronegative at 2.2 .2, and oxygen is more electronegative at 3.4. So it has to do with these two polar molecules. Water is polar. So one negative pole is attracted to another molecule's positive pole. So you need one, um, one polar molecule attracted to another polar molecule. So let's zoom in again, thinking about a little bit what's going on with the electrons. Why does that occur? So electrons are going to spend more time with the oxygen. And why is that? It's because the oxygen is part, is, uh, has a greater electronegativity. And we won't get into why much more than that at this point. But oxygen has a greater electronegativity, so it's going to pull on shared electrons harder. And electrons are negative. Whereas hydrogen has a lower electronegativity. So any shared electrons that we have, they're going to get pulled away from hydrogen because it has a lower electronegativity. They're going to spend, electrons will spend less time with hydrogen. And we say that is exposing hydrogen's proton because hydrogen is just a proton and an electron circling it. So if that electron moves towards the oxygen, we just are left with that positive proton, which makes it partially positive. But overall, I'll just note that the overall molecule is neutral equal amounts in the molecule of protons and electrons. So we have all these partially positive sides orienting themselves to the partially negative sides and creating all these hydrogen bonds in the water. Hydrogen sides, partially positive, oriented towards partially negative sides, oxygens, um, and the perimeter ones, they're forming hydrogen bonds pulling along the edges. And then the central waters have hydrogen bonds pulling towards the center. 
And that's all the waters I'll do. I'll just do those, those five total. Um, so we can see like how many hydrogen bonds are forming. Like our perimeter ones, the ones closest to the penny have two hydrogen bonds. Um, the ones towards the top have three, whereas our central one has four hydrogen bonds. Now, if any of you become like super duper cool chemistry people, you'll, you'll probably find soon that water can actually find, form uh, five or six hydrogen bonds. There's some good research for that. I'm just doing for simplicity here, showing our four hydrogen bonds, um, how, they're, how they're forming. So water, the hydrogen bonds are sort of pulling those perimeter waters um, from our central water towards the center. So if everything is getting pulled towards the center, what that is going to help us form is a specific shape. It's gonna help us kinda of wanna form a sphere. And our perimeter waters, they're pulling on each other, so they're holding each other, kinda of like Red Rover, Red Rover, if you ever played that as a, a little person. They're holding on to their neighbor's hands so that they don't break apart. And they're not gonna break apart until something pulls them apart um, harder than they can hold on to their neighbor's hands with their hydrogen bond. So their pulling together creates this cool um, principle called surface tension. And you've probably heard of surface tension. Maybe you've gone water skiing um, and applied surface tension, or you've seen a water strider or a bug land on water. They're using that principle of surface tension that the water, the perimeter one waters don't want to be broken. It's kind of like they, they form a surface. Okay, so um, gravity though is pulling down on this big water bulb that's forming. And the force of gravity, since it's pulling down, is working to flatten the water bulge. And the flattening of the water bulge increases the strain on all of our hydrogen bonds the more that it flattens. So the, the water itself, our central water, has these four hydrogen bonds and again, you know, in reality, there's more than that that can actually form. But for simplicity here, we're drawing four. Um, pulling the exterior water, uh, they're pulling in, trying to make that sphere. And if we show what's going on, you know, you've probably seen a drop and it's harder to see a drop in the air. But if the drop is in the air or if you, you look up a video of water in space, which is super cool, it forms a, a cool little sphere that'll just bounce around. Imagine having like a five gallon sphere of water you could drink out of, It'd be super cool. Uh, but on the ground, uh, the water drop starts to flatten and that's because of gravity. So gravity's trying to flatten it like a pancake. The water itself is trying to pull into a sphere. So we got these opposing forces, but eventually that force of gravity, um, the, the strain that gets put on the hydrogen bonds holding together overcomes the, uh, the ability of the hydrogen bonds to hold the waters together. So eventually the force of gravity pulling down and apart is greater than the force of the hydrogen bonds holding the bolts together. And then the whole thing pops. Okay, so water's ability to want to hold its neighbor's hand uh, or stick to itself is called cohesion. That's a great term, cohesion there, and that's because of hydrogen bonding that we have great cohesion in water here. Whereas adhesion is water's ability to stick to another surface. So when water's sticking to something like glass, um, that's because of adhesion. So polar surfaces work a little better than nonpolar. Alcohol. That was our second penny that we looked at. If I draw that here, isopropyl alcohol is three carbons with these seven hydrogens and then the alcohol group, that OH attached, okay? So that OH attached right there, it's going to be polar and the oxygen on it's going to be partially negative and the hydrogen will be partially positive. So that's the polar part of isopropyl. Now it has this carbon and all these hydrogens and they're essentially going to be nonpolar. Now, if you take organic chemistry, you'll see that central carbon, um, it's, it's not as maybe nonpolar as the perimeter ones um, because the oxygen and the alcohol is pulling some electron density to it. But in general, that top piece is nonpolar. Okay, so the top piece is nonpolar there. So if we show another alcohol, it'll try to form hydrogen bonds with the alcohol section. But as soon as you get up to where 
the alcohol is next to the carbons, it's gonna be blocked, no hydrogen bonds. So the H bonds, just ignore the stuff on the right for a sec, I'll write that down in a minute. The H bonds with water will form with the alcohol, but then when water tries to form hydrogen bonds with the carbons up at the top, it's neutral, so they get blocked. But then we can have hydrogen bonds forming down at the bottom because polar things like to attract, they can form hydrogen bonds. So if we jot that down, just what all was going on there, the hydrogen bonding is blocked by those nonpolar carbons and hydrogens that are all along the top. So they're blocking our hydrogen bonding. And hydrogen bonding, again, you wanna think like, what is trying to hold that water bulge together? Hydrogen bonds are holding that big fluid bulge all together. So if we can't form hydrogen bonds, what's that gonna do to the size of the water bulge that was forming. Um, so fewer hydrogen bonds means less cohesion, more hydrogen bonds, more cohesion, more stickiness, internal stickiness. So fewer hydrogen bonds in alcohol means the fluid bulge is smaller. And we saw that it had like point, 0.53, I think, um, milliliters, uh, which was less than water's 0.8 or so. So here's our soap. Okay. Soap is like a big, long string of carbons, depending on the type of soap. Um, and at the very end, you have this charged head with carbon and a couple oxygens on there and the, the oxygens are negative. So that side's like really polar charged. And then the big long string of carbons here, that's nonpolar. So again, nonpolar things are not going to stick to polar things super well. So when a water comes in and tries to form hydrogen bonds, it will with the charged head, those hydrogens can interact because they're positive, but they're gonna get blocked by this whole big old um, tail there. And then the hydrogens can interact with the charged head again. Whereas another soap molecule, the, the charged part will interact um, and the nonpolar part will interact, but they won't interact with each other. So they form a sphere in water. Soaps form a sphere in water with the charged head on the outside interacting with the water and the nonpolar tail in the middle. So we got our nonpolar tail here. Um, and the, it's gonna be blocking our hydrogen bonds from forming. So again, we have something blocking hydrogen bonds. Hydrogen bonds hold together your fluid bulge and the charged head, the, the polar head can interact with the water. It can form hydrogen bonds and stick there. Um, and that is why soap loses also. So there it was. Um, make any notes down in the comments of things we should add and we'll get more next time. That was very fun and I will see you soon. Slim Dog Science with me, Caleb Fleming. Subscribe, like, comment, and hit that bell.